The Pinaleno Mountains near Safford, Arizona are home to a rare subspecies of red squirrel that exists nowhere else in the world. Meet the Mount Graham Red Squirrel. It was listed as endangered in 1987 and biologists have been closely monitoring its population ever since. So this squirrel's probably looking at us. Arizona game and fish biologist Tim Snow has helped conduct the annual squirrel census for about 20 years. There he is, it's right behind us. Census takers don't actually count squirrels, they inventory their middens. And so this is where they're caching their cones. They dig holes in the scale pile and then they bury cones as deep as that hole is. This is a typical red squirrel midden. It's a pile of spruce, fir, and pine cone scales that builds up over time as squirrels feast on cone seeds and discard the scales. So they go to the midden year after year after year. This is his territory, his or her territory. The squirrel comes here, it feeds here, it gathers cones, brings it back here. Uh, the midden acts as a refrigerator, keeps the cones closed until the squirrel comes back to feed on it. They clip all the way down to the core and, and make a, a real clean, what we call a, a cone cob. Fresh signs of feeding indicate an active midden, and that counts as one squirrel. If we come to a midden and we don't see cone cobs, we don't see fresh scale, we don't see uh, cached cones, then that gets marked as not active, and we don't count that as a squirrel. For a decade or so, the Mount Graham red squirrel population hovered in the range of 200 to 300 animals. Until the last big fire, which was the Fry Fire in uh, 2017, and our numbers plummeted down to 35 animals. I was panicking, actually. The idea that there were only 35 of this species left, the subspecies, on the mountain we all were extremely concerned that we might actually see it wink out over the winter. One of the short-term projects that we developed just to get them through the winter was a supplemental feeding program. Luckily, uh, after the first year after the fire, then the numbers rebounded to 75 squirrels last year. And this year, we're still at about that number. We were at 78 this year. That's the estimate for 2019. At least 78 Mount Graham red squirrels are still living on the mountain. It's still only 78 individuals that we have, that we know of. If we were to have another large fire, high intensity, high severity come through, I mean, there's every chance that we could see this subspecies wiped out. We're very concerned about that and we're working hard with our partners on different recovery aspects to try to ensure that that doesn't happen. The U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service is collaborating with the Coronado National Forest, Arizona Game and Fish, the Phoenix Zoo, and the University of Arizona on strategies to save the squirrel. So this is an area we just finished working on. The Forest Service, through its Pinaleno Ecosystem Restoration Project, has been thinning trees to make the landscape more resilient to wildfire. We don't want to lose any more of the squirrel's habitat, so we're trying to remove those fuels, protect the trees that we have. As you can see, we've done some thinning to open up the canopy. We've left these limbs here as erosion protection. These will eventually degrade and it will look hopefully like we've never been working in here, but also it should then be a lot more resilient in the future um, for fire to move through. And we do have a squirrel um, right up in this area. He was uh, here while we were doing the work. He tends to spend a lot of time here. He likes these logs as sort of a runway for him and a shelter. And so we were very careful when we were working in this area not to get too close to it to leave him structures that he was going to be using. Typically we stay more than at 200 feet or further away from any known squirrel. With permission from Fish and Wildlife, they removed fuel hazards inside that 200 foot buffer to make this a safer place for the squirrel to live. And hope that, you know, in, in the future years that it will you know, mean that fire can be here more naturally and we can also have squirrels at the same time. The Forest Service is also collecting cones to grow new trees and it's using pheromone packets to protect existing trees from insects. It basically is telling other insects, this hotel is full, don't move in here. 
At the Phoenix Zoo, the Arizona Center for Nature Conservation has been trying to crack the code on how to breed Mount Graham red squirrels in captivity. It's not actually that easy because the, the species only comes into breeding desire, let's say, for about eight hours every year. And they're territorial the rest of the time, so you can't put them together in a cage except during that brief window of time when they won't try to harm each other. While the zoo works on that puzzle, Arizona Game and Fish is removing non-native abert squirrels that compete for food and habitat. It's also working on new, more efficient ways to estimate red squirrel populations. There's a lot to learn, and the University of Arizona is conducting a massive amount of research to better understand the Mount Graham red squirrel and what can be done to help it. In the Endangered Species Act, there's a part of the act that requires that we designate critical habitat for endangered species. At the time that we listed the squirrel, their highest population was in what we call the spruce fir habitat, which is at the highest level of this mountain. That particular part of the forest has been hit by four different insect outbreaks and three different fires, meaning that most of that habitat now is not available for the squirrel. It's, it's in a state that it doesn't provide the resources that it needs. The Fish and Wildlife Service is re-evaluating what should be designated as critical habitat. The typical habitat is 8,000 feet and above. Closed canopy, interlocking trees. But the truth is all suitable habitat is critical for this endangered species to survive. The Forest Service has also been hiring some seasonals each summer since the fire to come up here and actually sweep through areas looking for new middens. And Fish and Wildlife is using 3D aerial imagery known as LIDAR to search for new places where squirrels could live. I think that you know, we're more likely to find squirrels in areas that we hadn't been looking before. And I think that, you know, given the, the habitat management that we're doing, I think that we're, we're on the right track. What we have to do is to continue to monitor, try to do the little things that, that can help them along the way, and, and hopefully the squirrels uh, remain on this mountain forever.